Got you now. We're live and living color now, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Technical difficulties out the way, yes, and we sir. can begin our pal chat of the day. So, boys and girls, welcome again. It's another great Wednesday, and we have another fantastic guest for your listening and visual pleasure. So, I'd like to introduce Mr. Demetrius Gross. We always start off asking some simple questions like, um, what you do, where you're from, and some of your hobbies. That's actually a new one, but we're going to throw that at you. All right. Well, uh, hi, everybody. Hi, pals. I'm Demetrius Gross. I'm an actor and a writer and a producer and a father, not necessarily in that order. Uh, and I'm from Washington, D.C. And uh, some of the things I like to do are create art, create music, and I enjoy uh, cycling and um, playing with my kids. And, uh, you know, those, that's, that's it, pretty much in a nutshell. Hi. I want to be hey. an actor. I also want you want to be an actor as well. What do you love about, what do you love about acting? I like about acting, like, I'm, I'm, like, acting as I'm a scary, some, I'm, like, scaring something. Do you like scary movies? Yes. What's your favorite scary movie? Anywise. Anywise. Oh, that's the uh, It, huh? Yeah. The movie It. Wow. The second one. So what do you think What do you think would be the easiest part about acting, and then what do you think might be the hardest part? The, I think the hardest part is going to be, like, ha having the makeup. If nobody is a makeup artist, you just have to do it by yourself. I think that's the hardest part. That's good. And the easy part, I think it's it's about like scaring stuff. That's gonna be easy for you. <laughs> that's gonna be easy. For you. <laughs> uh, that's cool, man. And that's Michael. Hey, Michael. And I can also voice change. You change. So one of the, the things that that um got me started in acting was actually changing my voice when I would call my mom at her at her office when I was a kid about your age. I'm not encouraging you to do that, by the way. But what I am saying is that if you like to do things like change your voice and uh, if Halloween is a fun holiday for you where you get to dress up in characters and you like to read a lot, then I think you would make a great, great actor and perhaps even a director or a writer or a storyteller or maybe all three. Um, Thank I think you. it's important to continue to, to read and read aloud so that when you're, uh, when you're public speaking, which acting is, you'll, you'll have that confidence that you'll need. I, I was thinking about making a court cartoon voice because you get to read so it can be a little bit easier. Yes, yes, and, you, and then you, you won't uh, necessarily memorize everything because you'll maybe be lifting the text off of the page. That's good. Well, I would I would love to 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 stay in touch and figure out and and figure out how you can uh, get more into it. Are you doing plays in school? Well, yeah. Well, I mean, now maybe not so much. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Well, well, let's keep that up. Let's definitely uh, have uh, and mom, if you can hear hear us. Uh, <laughs> reading aloud is really a good exercise. It's something that I do even in between things. I just, you know, uh, reading in kids or, you know, anyone to anyone just aloud is is a is such a, a good practice and exercise. And it's very simple. And sometimes it's overlooked, but. It's a really helpful tool to get Michael uh, really comfortable with public speaking and uh, and his articulation and his ability to change his voices. Children's books are great for that as well uh, in terms of uh, being able to change his voice and, and hone that talent. Thank you. Great, great word of advice for our kids. Hopefully you guys are listening to that. You know, read as much as possible, one, to educate yourself, but two, to get over your fear of public speaking or speaking in front of large, uh, large crowds or crowds of people. Very good, very good advice. 
Well, Michael went ahead of usual schedule, but that was great because, you know, I want to see more of that in this conversation. Kids asking what they want to ask. Don't be shy like Mr. Michael was. Okay, that was awesome. I guess he's a longtime listener, first time viewer to this show. So back to the regular pecking order of things now. Um, so you kind of told you gotta me. send me some of that cinnamon toast crunch, Tabor. <laughs> You're hogging all the cinnamon toast crunch. You got all the boxes with you, man. <laughs> I went to the grocery store. I was looking for my cinnamon toast crunch. I couldn't find none. Don't tell anyone. We've been hoarding this stuff, okay? <laughs> okay but we're going to take care of you, okay? <laughs> so uh, you told Michael a little bit about how you got into acting, but um, let's tell the rest of the folks, what was like your first real job, like when you knew, oh man, I've, I've arrived, I'm here. And did you do plays in high school? Did you go to workshops as a child? Give us that little introduction kind of. I did the, um, well, to, to dispel a commonly held myth, I don't believe it is making it. I think um, the process of, of being an actor is one where you'll have uh, highs and lows. And so it's important to heal about things. So you don't get too high up with those highs and too low with those lows. And um, I think the, the, the victory goes to those who don't quit. Um, so for all the kids out there, you know, Michael included, <laughs> It's a it's a lifestyle and a and a journey of self discovery and um, I would just encourage you guys who are interested in in performing arts and acting and things of that nature to to try not to look at it as a a finish line or a place of of making it. Uh, try to look at it as a journey where you'll learn a lot about yourself and the and uh, the, the world around you. But my first opportunity that really presented itself that made me feel like I was at least a professional was on a show called Heroes that was on uh, NBC um, years ago. It was, a, uh, it was a primetime television show and it was, you know, I was fresh out of college and uh, it was like a, a lead guest star in a role in a big primetime TV show. And it, it made me feel like uh, at least at this point, maybe that I hadn't arrived, but that I was at least a professional and, and uh, I was getting into a realm of people who were really doing it at a high level. Awesome. Heroes was actually a great show. It's one of those ones on my Netflix list that I got to finish that I kind of started, but never finished. I, I really you can't. guys know about really that show? Like me now. Raise your hand if you guys have heard of that show, Heroes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great, great. Mr. Salas, I think you got to mute yourself. Thank you very much. Um, so it's done great to see so many people out on, on online today. It's, it's awesome. They, they knew you were coming, so this isn't our wow. usual. Thing. So you played on Heroes. That was like the first start. Um, some of the other big shows you've done, and I'm sure some of these guys are fans of, you did Fear the Walking Dead. I did. did it. Rookie. That's not out yet. That's not out yet. Oh. Michael, you might, you might be interested in that. That's kind of scary. Uh-oh. Well, <laughs> Michael will love that then, right? Yeah, Michael might. I don't know if, if Michael's mom wants him to watch that one, though. That was pretty <laughs> pretty spooky. So then that's on the new season if you're coming out on that one, right? On the sixth season, yeah. One show that you did that I think is highly underrated but was one of my favorite shows was Frontier. That I, was you know, and, and another thing, it's interesting that you mentioned um, – Frontier because it was a history piece. Uh, yeah. It was set in the 1700s. Yes. Uh, and so uh, for our, our students out there who are interested in the arts, um, it's important to pay special close attention to, to your history class and your social studies and learning about what, what the country uh, has gone through and how the country has evolved, uh, that being America uh, how uh, the history of things, how Latin America has evolved over the years, how Europe has evolved over the years, because those stories and, and, and those, um, that information will be able to help you uh, inform when you're developing characters and writing stories and performing stories. That was a big, a big 
history buff, as they say. I was really interested in history when I was in school. So I would definitely encourage you guys to to uh, pay close attention in, in history class. I don't know everyone's doing remote learning right now, so sometimes that could be a little more a little more intensive, but I'd encourage that. That is awesome. That is awesome. I always try and tell the kids, in my opinion, history was always the easiest subject because you just listen to stories. So it's more memorization than anything. And if you really get into it, there's some really interesting stories when you see, like what you just mentioned, how the Americas were founded, not just yeah. North, Central, South, the expansion from Europe to the Americas. I mentioned about that earlier. So great advice. What's one of the most, I guess, one of you that you got? One of my favorite roles was actually, I see some law enforcement officers online. So uh, thank you. Thank you all for your service. I, uh, I got a chance to, to play a law uh, an officer or actually a deputy, a deputy sheriff in a show called Banshee that was on uh, HBO Cinemax. Uh, I think it still streams actually, but um that show was important to me because we we talked a lot about um, about culture and about um, uh, race relations in America. It was kind of a saturated, pulpy kind of a drama, and um, allowed uh, I think for us as actors, we we don't always get a chance to have social commentary where we are there to illustrate and highlight. Uh, story but in that particular show um banshee you know i had a wife who was um who was pregnant and she lost our baby and it was a it was just a good it was a great opportunity to to talk about uh race and talk about um uh even things like um accountability law enforcement and accountability and all those things in a in a really um intelligent way um and it was a pivotal moment for my personal career. Um, but it's not, it may not be child appropriate for, for our kids on, on PAL actually, because it was, it was actually on a, on a cable network. Uh, you played an officer or a detective on a more network friendly show, right? Right. How was that experience for you being at, um, me and my partners, we're all LAPD. Okay. So how did you like that compared well, to the fancy role where you're a deputy? Yeah, well, being, and I was, a, I was a detective. I was a detective in the LAPD. So that was, uh, you know, it was fascinating to see the level of sophistication that goes into keeping, um, keeping crime at bay. And, um, and also, it was interesting to see the, the level of intelligence it, and 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 the and the level of concert in terms of uh, people working together between different departments to actually mitigate and to and to keep things from escalating. Uh, I got a chance to work with your last guest, uh, Richard T. Jones. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I got a chance to work with some really great great actors and producers, and one of the writers on there. Uh, going back to you, Michael. The, um, one of the writers on the rookie, he, he was um, he was a actual sheriff, I think. He was um, uh, Fred Cotto's son. It, it was actually um, one of the executives, and he was a writer. So we got to to have the the privilege of having real authentic stories and information um, that translated to some of the experiences that officers see uh, out there in the field. So it was. Uh, it was powerful. It was, it was a great experience. And, and actually being young, uh, I guess youngish, I'm in my, my late thirties, but to be able to play a detective, I had to approach that with a lot of reverence because it's not very often that you see, you know, young detectives of color, you know? And so I... What is, what is that like to work around real officers? I, 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 w I wish I knew what that felt like. Oh my! Goodness. Well, it's it's very humbling because you realize. Oh, oh, I see, Officer Alcatraz, yes. Al Alcaraz, Alcaraz. Yes. yes. Um, you know, it, there's no there's no margin for tomfoolery. I'll just put it like that because 
it's a very serious, high intensity job at times. I often sometimes hear some, you know, newer newer officers talk about, you know, it, it paling in comparison to what they see on television <laughs> because it's not as busy. It's a lot more paperwork. Um, but it it was on our sh on the rookie. It was interesting because because we we really had real guys there, men and women sharing real stories, teaching us uh, the, the technical aspects, the tech aspects uh, of fear and, and uh, it was just, it's fascinating. It's one of the reasons why I like being an actor is that I get to the opportunity to delve into different people's lifestyles. So after I'm finished doing my role as a, as a detective, I get to come back and, and kind of be myself. And it's like, oh, I tried on that hat. That was fun. And then I get to go on. But for the men and women of law enforcement, you know, that's something that they, that they have to, uh, that it's almost more vocational, which is just a big word for it's something that they live with around the clock. And uh, I think we, we, we owe a great, a great debt to our, our, our good cops with integrity, like yourselves. Well, thank you. That was a great answer, and it answered a lot for me and Alcaraz because every day, the tall guy you're looking at with that blue shirt on, he does opposite of you. He's playing officer, but he's supposed to be, so, you know, you put that in perspective for us, you know, we kind of understand him a little better now. That was a great answer. This is, this is like Superman blue, you know what I mean? You know, there's powder blue and Superman, this is Superman blue. Let's, Superman blue. let's mute him, let's mute him. <laughs> Uh, some awesome. of the kids, some of the kids had some questions. I don't know if you want to go to those now or not. Yeah, yeah, no, let's do it. Let me uh, search to see. Okay, I, let's start with Yaretta and Miguel. Then we'll go to Alberto after. Yeah, so yeah. I, you're on. I have, a, I have a question about acting. So, uh, what was what was your hardest script or line to memorize? Wow, Yaritza, that is a very, very good question. And um, I would say the hardest one to memorize was probably one of my first biggest ones, and that was Heroes. Um, and it was because it was in multiple languages. I had to speak in Creole, which is a derivative of French. And then I had to speak in French. And then I also, of course, had to speak in English. So for all of our you know, bilingual students out there, scholars out there, you actually have a very good advantage, definitely can, um, with your mother tongue, as they say, um, your, 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 your bilingual studies, because what you'll find if you're interested in, in you know, writing or acting or creating comic books is that language is a big part of it. Language is everything. Language uh, will help you memorize faster and it will allow you to um, to have that upper edge. So like I said to Michael, definitely um, reading aloud to yourself, hearing your articulation, um, reading in wh whatever language you, that you feel comfortable with, whether that's English, whether that's Spanish, whether that's French, whether that's Russian, um, the more languages that you have at your disposal, the easier it is going to be for you as you start to perform in plays and things of that nature. But yeah, I think Heroes was probably the one of the harder ones and it was early on because of the multi-languages. Uh, Quick question about you. which Creole did they have you speak in? Haitian, Louisiana? Haitian Creole, yeah, it was, it was, yeah, because there, there's, there's, that's right. There's many yeah. different, a lot of people don't understand that when you say Creole, it's not one specifically, so. Yeah, okay, was, hey, actually, Haitian Creole. I was part of a Haitian family for a little while. We'll talk about that later. All right. <laughs> that answer your question, Yaritza? Yes, sir. Awesome. I Mr. Alberto, you're up. Uh-oh. <laughs> for the COVID-19, have you been, like, shooting any more movies or doing anything? Like you know what I did? I'm, I'm actually pretty proud of this one because I, I didn't think I would do anything during COVID-19, Alberto, because I know you're, you're probably in school a lot and you're thinking because you're doing virtual learning, you know, you're probably wondering how is anyone doing anything where you have to be live in action? Well, I actually did a video game called Call of Duty that, um, and because it was, it was just voiceovers, which is another uh, thing that, Michael, you might be 
interested in. Um, I, uh, I got a chance to record some characters for the Call of Duty video game that's going to come out soon. And that was during um, the COVID pandemic. And that was really raise your raise your hand, boys and girls, if you heard of the video game Call of Duty. Yeah. Oh, Thank you, everybody. So I'm not sure it it may come out before the end of the year. I'm sure it'll be there right in time for uh for Christmas. Isn't it the Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War? I think it is called Cold War. It's the last one. If if you play if you play, it's the character called Sol, uh, Sergeant Griggs. Hmm. He's one of the uh, characters you can play with. Sergeant Griggs. Um, but yeah, I, that was the only thing I've done during this time. And, and of course, I've been writing a lot. And uh, like I said, reading to my kids and trying to just stay sharp in terms of language, because that is a big key component to, uh, to what we do as actors. Awesome. Kimberly, you're up next. And Michael, we'll come back to you, Michael. Don't worry. We ain't forgot about Mr. Michael there. Kimberly, are you on? Yes, I'm here. All right. It's your okay. time. My question, my question, do, it, it, do you ever have a hard time getting into characters? Sometimes it can get difficult, Kimberly, because um, one thing I try to tell kids who are in school, uh, young scholars, is really seize all of the time you have and energy that you have to, to just be a kid and be in school and do your camps and, and do, you know, your, your sports teams and your extracurricular groups. Because once you get into high school, once you get into college, once one day, maybe if you get married and you have kids, all of these things start to make it so you have to you have to balance your time a little differently. So for me, um, one of the hardest, hardest characters to get into was, um, uh, what was the hardest character? I don't, I don't know, Kimberly. I would say the hardest character, or what, when was it? I'm sorry, what was your question again, Kimberly? I got, I digressed. Oh my God. <laughs> Is it difficult for you to get into characters sometimes? Sometimes it can be it, it can be a time challenge and and an, uh, and a and you have to kind of find yourself in the character, Kimberly, and find um, the character in yourself. There's going to be things that are very different between you and the character, and then there'll be some crossovers and some similarities. It's kind of like when we watch our favorite program on television. If you say you watch anything, I don't know. Wow. Yeah, like, yeah, say you watch that show and there's a character on there, some similarities might be between you and the characters and some might not be. And so uh, as an actor, what we try to do is try to find those things that are similar between the character that we're gonna play and ourselves and really let that be a doorway into which we can start to flourish in the playing of these characters within these stories. Good um, okay, thank you. Awesome, Michael, you're up. I think Giovanni had a question too, uh, Lee. Okay, um, you right next. Um, uh, how do you um? Uh, how many years did it take you to train to do the voice? Do the voice. Uh, I took, I went to college for four years, but before that I went to high school for four years and I was doing, uh, doing plays in high school. So I, I can't wait to hear about your theater career, Michael. I'm sure you're going to be doing all kinds of plays. I can feel it. And um, so, you know, there's a, there's a quote that says it takes 10,000 hours to master anything. And uh, I think it's important to know that there is no, there is no failure unless you quit, right? So if you, maybe you don't get to 10,000 hours or maybe you get beyond 10,000 hours, but to become a master of anything, the idea is just to continue to push forward. Um, it took me years, it's, you know, and we're always learning, Michael. Like I, I still read books and uh, do workshops on how to become better at, at what I do. And 
uh, it's important to note that learning never really stops and that there's, there's no, um, there's no, there's no such thing as failure um, unless you give up. So you just kind of don't want to give up and however long it takes you to reach your goals, just keep pressing forward and doing that because that's really the definition of success. By the way, this is my brother, Michael, and I'm his little brother, Nico. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's Nico, and I'm talking to Nico, and I was reading Michael, so pardon me. I almost apologize. It says Michael on your screen. Yeah, it does. It says Michael, because I was calling Nico Michael. <laughs> nice to meet you both. Nice to meet you, Michael and Nico. Uh, Gio, you said, partner? Gio, you're up. Um, by question, um, how many years did you college and high school? How many years? Because, like, when you said four in college, I think, I was like, what? I thought one year or two you have to stay there. Well, um, the college was a university and I got a degree a bachelor's and so that was I was there for four years but I recommend if you have the uh, ambition to go to school get a master's uh, that can be anywhere from a two to three year program and then uh, PhD programs are also uh, two to three years these days uh, there are there are lots of ways to to, to do it um, I happen to go to a four-year degree, degree program, uh, and training is a, is a big is a big deal that's overlooked sometimes in the arts. Whether you're a painter, if you sketch and do a lot of you know you draw comics, there's um you can you can find a, a degree program for almost any kind of art form right now. And so, I'm a big advocate for uh, for kids like yourselves. Uh, you know, doing uh, gifted and talented programs and after school programs and and pursuing um, their arts in college as well. And it's never too early to start thinking about, you know, how you want to how you want to uh, how you want to continue your education. So I'm seeing a lot of kids who look like they're probably like eighth graders. I see some younger kids, maybe first graders. So it's a good little spread. They're not all kids, sir. That's Officer Piamonte. She's not a, a child. I mean, it's, yeah, uh, I, I, I guess I'm Jordan being. Jordan uh, Statue. Yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> I was speaking more macro, but I definitely see the offers with the brass on up okay. here as well. So they just they just look little. They're not really small kids. <laughs> uh, so you talked about your college you went to. What college was it, if you don't mind telling us? I went to a few. Um, I graduated from Carnegie Mellon. I got a chance to, and that's in Pittsburgh. Um, I, went to, I went to Howard University for uh, a very, very meaningful but brief stint. And, uh, I, went to, uh, I went to Oxford for a little while. I, I tried to make my education my own. So I, I went to a lot of different colleges and got a lot of different schools of thought on the craft so that uh, I could feel like I, I had my, my own experience. Is Oxford Ivy League? I don't know. It was a it was a group that was called BADA. It was the British American Drama Academy, and they were at Oxford. So I don't know if it's Ivy League. It was a good school, though. Wow, wow, impressive, very impressive. What what is the biggest uh, um, um, words of advice you can give our kids in, in regards to going to school, continuing their higher education? trying to, I know you talked about getting a master's PhD. What's the biggest advice you can give them as far as continuing that education? I would say uh, it's never too early to start thinking about what you want to pursue. Uh, what right now, uh, while you all are in uh, grade school, I would really pay close attention to two things, things that come easy to you and things that people love when you do them. In other words, the things that you do that make people really happy and people feel really grateful that you shared that gift with them. Um, it's important to, to embrace your culture. Um, we all come from diverse backgrounds and all of our cultures are 
uh, important and worthy to be highlighted and offer our own uh, pizzazz or our own seasoning and flavor of, of what we do. Uh, so definitely lean into that. Um, you know, if, if, if you're a Latino and you hear Spanish around the house, you know, pay attention to what mom and dad are saying, get that, get as much of that language as you can. Um, if wherever, wherever you're, where you're getting, uh, stimuli from, uh, from culture, from culture, lean into that. And, and the things that you are, are, are passionate about the things that you're excited about doing and that come easy to you. Um, those are things that you're, that you have gifts in and those gifts can be developed and honed and developed over time. And it's never too early to start, uh, really channeling your energy in terms of what you want to be and what you want to do because your purpose is great. And, um, you know, God has a, a very specific purpose for why he created you and, and why you are, uh, why you're here and you have so many gifts to offer the world. Um, so it's never too early to start honing in on that. Good. I was gonna say that, man, left me speechless. Those are real words of encouragement and a deep message right there, you know? You just told them in better words, don't quit and can carry on on whatever you want to do and pursue your passion. That's, I can't say any more on that. Yeah, we wish you were speechless more often. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 what you had said, what you had said about follow following your passion, but uh, also if there's somebody that tells you that you're good in something, try to explore that avenue. That's pretty good. Officer Lee and myself, we do we do a lot of mentoring with the kids, and uh, I never thought about it from that uh, perspective before. But that's really cool. I'm gonna start looking at it that way and telling the kids to follow that. It could be anything. I mean, say you're in math class. I'm not encouraging this, but like if you're in a class and you just doodle in your notebook and you make these cool characters or these cool drawings and, you know, you show them to your friend or you show them to your, your sister or your brother or your friends and they're like, oh my gosh, Alvin, this is so good. Or, uh, you know, Melvin, this is so cool. You know, that is, that's like the universe telling you, hey, you have a gift. You should do more of that because not only is it fun, but it comes pretty easily to you and it could just doing that could take you all over the world. It could take you all over the world. So um, play it, pay close attention to yourselves and the things that, that you do that almost make you almost make time seem to disappear. You know, like if you're reading a certain kind of book or, a novel and you know an hour goes by and you're like whoa I was, I was only I thought I was doing that for 10 minutes it might be keen keen for you to take note of that um and what that book was about or what that story was about because it's something that really spoke mm -hmm. to you and your gift yeah cool you I, I don't know if you can see it you just said the name Alvin I don't know if you can see our kids you might have to scroll but one of our kids name is Alvin yeah, Alvin's in the middle of my screen, so I just I pulled his name. Great, 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 Alvin. Reynoso. You look like you, Reynoso. You look like you're in a gaming chair with some. Uh, I am. I, I did the full screen with all everybody. <laughs> <so I'm> like, <laughs> <laughs> with all all of the people, yeah, all I of us. I think you also mentioned Melvin. You said Alvin and Melvin, or was it just Alvin? I said Melvin because I have a, a Melvin yeah. Batista. Mm -hmm. Oh, he uh, looked, there he is. He's like, oh gosh, he's yeah. talking about me. <laughs> Demetrius, you said you uh, cycled and into the arts on the job, even though people think that acting is just acting, they don't do much, but you do have a lot that, that you brought up the educational side and then you have hobbies obviously like cycling how important is your physical agility or abilities for the job good question uh, it's great question important. It's a, and i'm sure it's equally or probably more important as an officer uh, officer uh, i said i was i think it's a uh, uh, a thing that starts with eating right like what we eat is kind of more this exercise is more important than any other exercise mm -hmm. we do um it's uh 
it's really important for not only our health, but just our energy levels. Um, I see you drinking your water. Um, water is kind of, it's literally ambrosia. Ambrosia is a fancy word for, uh, for the nectar of the gods. So the more water we're drinking, the better we are. Um, it's great for our brain, it's great for our organs, uh, helps our energy, um, helps us stay alert. Um, so water is a big deal for us. We stay super hydrated on set when we're making, making films or when we're on, on, uh, on stage. And uh, I think it's important to exercise because it gives you um, self-confidence um, and you know, it feels good when you know you're doing something good for your body. Right. We all love candy. We like chocolate. We like, you know, fatty foods. But honestly, I think it's important to have a day where you are allowed to do that. But to try to keep yourself in a, in a certain rhythm where you're conscious of, of what you're putting in your body so that what you, the output that your body has is something that, that you feel confident and proud of. Um, so. You guys all look really, really healthy kids and, and adults and officers. It's like, I, I got to address my offices on here. I didn't know it was going to be all the offices. On here. I, thought was, I didn't know what I was actually walking into, to be honest. I had no idea. So this is so cool. Well, we hope it's a pleasure experience so far for you. It is, man. It, it awesome. totally is. Awesome. And then maybe talk about your family. You have how many kids? How many kids do I have? I have uh, 75 kids. No, I have three children. <laughs> three. I have boys, girl. Are they trying to be actors following their father's footsteps? I don't know. Footsteps, I'm or? leaning them. Uh, actually, I'm not leaning them, per se, towards any direction. Um, my oldest has an affinity towards it. And uh, my young, my middle son, he's kind of a... A renaissance kid so he anything he picks up he's he's kind of astute with it look at Sophia with Sophia I just saw her too <laughs> um and then my daughter she she might be an actor you know because she's she does voice you know voices and you know she always has a persona she's very dramatic and very you know mm -hmm. uh she has a really good sense of humor uh which are all good qualities for people in the arts. I think a good sense of humor is great for everybody in every profession, really. I'm sure it helps the officers to have a sense of humor. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Some of us don't have a good sense of humor, but uh, it does help a lot, like you said, in all aspects of, uh, of your life. And, and just laughing makes you, makes you younger, right? Makes you feel younger. Oh, yeah. you know, yeah. Even, yeah, even, even old guys like myself, laughing helps me feel like I'm a younger guy. So uh, really cool. It's all good. You know what they, you know, I heard a really great quote. We're all young to someone, right? Like the 70 year old yeah. is like a baby to the 90 year old. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, cool. absolutely. Let's see uh, who else we have on here. I think uh, Daniela Estrada had a question. Did oh, she? she oh. Never mind. Daniela, you have the floor. I don't, I don't see it, Daniela. Daniela Estrada Rivas is what she's under. Estrado. Oh, I see it. Go ahead, Luis. While we're waiting for Daniela, go ahead, Luis. Oh, her mic doesn't work. Oh. Is it Oh, one more with the, the big comment out. I think the question was, what movies? Is that what you were asking? Yeah. What What movies has he played in? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Who's the favor and type your question so we can ask him. While waiting on that, Yaritza had a question. Go ahead, Yaritza. I, uh, I don't want to assume I know what his 
his question was. <laughs> that would be a little long-winded, so I, I got to be careful to answer only the questions that are asked. Uh, my question is, um, what kind of languages have, how, I mean, how many languages have you learned from acting? Uh, you know, I've learned, what languages have I learned? I learned old English, Jacobean English. That's uh, English, but it's a, a, like the English that they used to speak in the medieval period when there were knights and, and, uh, and palaces and things of that, and castles. The old uh, that land yes, the olden days. <laughs> yes. That's, that was uh, when, when we learned Shakespeare. I'm sure maybe some of you are reading some Shakespeare. So that uh, Jacobean English is kind of a language in, its, in and of itself. And then, uh, like I was saying earlier, French, um, I've learned. I really, I, I, I really like the, um, the language of, of Spanish, but I haven't had a chance to, to play that, to play any characters that, that speak Espanol. But uh, I've always had an affinity towards that language. Um, I've had to speak Krosa, which is a South African dialect. Um, oh, the South African language. And uh, most recently, I had to do, a, I did a movie called Rampage with, um, with the uh, big, <laughs> and that uh, we, we had to learn like army jargon, which is its own kind of, language yes it is <laughs> cool <laughs> i think that was i'm oh, sorry go ahead that was one of the questions one of the kids asked if you acted in rampage and mm -hmm. uh i guess there was a second part of that question straight out of the compton too yeah oh. i wasn't straight out of the compton for about 10 minutes I was in the movie, yeah. What, which, what, 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 what actor were you, or what role did you play? I, uh, I'm, I'm actually only in the opening of the movie. Before the title credits, I play a guy named Rock. Who uh, there was a uh, the pretty crack much, house? yeah. There was a uh, <laughs> there was a, uh, a battering ram, a battering ram that came through the yeah. house, and, and it happened to be uh, my character's house. I played that. Character. That's hilarious. That's he was a awesome. bad boy. Yeah. Bad boy. Yeah. Adrian that was... has a question. Mr. Adrian, you're up. Why methods have you learned from acting? You got to speak a little louder, son. What life lessons have you learned from acting? Oh, that's good. You said with yeah. life lessons? Yes. Well, I learned, um, it's funny, people sometimes think that actors are, that they're not telling the truth, kind of like lying or making things up and they can kind of just make you believe something. And what I learned was that you really have to be a person and a person who keeps their word and a person who as character, and what does character mean? Character just basically means um, being who you know yourself to be, whether people are looking or whether people are not looking. And so um, a, a, my mentor the other day said something really valuable that I'll share on with you, share with you. And, and he said to me, he said, you can't be in life, but then be the truth on stage. So when people are watching shows or cartoons or uh, even when they're, they're looking for is truth, a sense of authenticity that would, was, is what is believable. And so what acting has taught me is that it's really important to be a, uh, to be a person of integrity, to, to keep your word um, and to, um, like Officer uh, Al 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 was saying, 
um, to take care of my health and that my health directly translates into my work. You know, I'm sure you all, 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 the, all the kids on, on the call, you guys know that when you have a good breakfast and you have a, you know, some water, you, you operate a little better during the day when you got a full stomach, you know? So health translates into your output and, um, and it's just important to, to be, be your good self. You know, the, the person that your parents are raising you to be, like really be that person and, and be kind to people. Kindness goes a long way. And so does a good sense of humor. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, it does. Our man Nico has to ask. You're in a movie right now. And how how do you be in a movie? How? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so Nico, was your was your was that your brother behind you? Was Michael your brother behind you? Yes, but he's not here. He's in the kitchen. How many years old is your brother, Nico? He's eleven. He's eleven. <laughs> Does he have a TikTok account? Well, yes, but he. No. Well, yes. No, he's not. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Michael. Bring your phone. Never mind. Scratch, scratch that from the record. Never mind. No. Okay. So forget that question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Michael has a TikTok. Oh yeah. Yeah, he does. Yeah, you, you just got one of our kids in trouble. Yeah. We won't be coming back gonna... to our program no time soon. <laughs> <laughs> what I was gonna say. Um... Okay. So listen. Nico. There's, um, there's, see, you're growing up in a really cool time where you have cameras on your phone, on, on cell phones. You know, I didn't get a cell phone until I was about 17, 18 years old. And then it was just this big, huge plastic thing that uh, didn't really do much except ring sometimes and it kept a charge for about an hour. But um, I would encourage you and your brother to start making videos on your phones and maybe create little scenarios like your favorite voices that you have. For each of those voices, I would take a piece of paper and write those characters, those voices that you that you that you make up. Create start creating um, a bio or or a uh, a name for those characters so that you can have them in your repertoire of characters that you develop. And you honestly never know where, where those characters can reveal themselves later on in your life as you can continue to uh, as, as an actor and as a, as a writer. But I think definitely one of the things I would have liked when I was younger is to be able to have the technology that is, that is available to you in the palm of your hands. So, um, and it's cool to have a sibling too. So for all you all out there with brothers and sisters, you know, when I was a kid, I, we would do plays in the living room during uh, Thanksgiving dinner, you know, or during Christmas dinner, me and my, my brothers and sisters and I, we'd make up plays. And sometimes the plays would be making fun of our parents. But, you know, as long as you do it with a good sense of humor, sometimes your parents will laugh at it. Awesome. Mr. Giovanni has a question. Um. What it, was it? I'm when he says something about like a big plastic bag or something. I don't get it. What the? I don't get it. like what is that? Like what's that big plastic thing? The big plastic bag. He wants for you to explain that brick cell phone you were talking about. Oh yeah, because we had these Nokia, uh, Giovanni. We had these Nokia cell phones. Back in the day, I'm not throwing Nokia under the bus. You gotta be careful when you're recording on Zoom these days. <laughs> but uh, you know, it, it was just it was very old, and uh, it wasn't like iPhones or uh, you know Galaxy phones. They 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 were at the top of they were at the top of their class in the '90s, but they uh, they pale in comparison, and so. Uh, and they definitely didn't have cameras on them like we have now. So I was just encouraging uh, Nico and his brother to, since they have access to cell phones with cameras, that they can start making their own videos and being creative with their characters. But that big plastic phone that I had, it, 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 was, an, it was a non-starter. So, 
um, so you mean like that that big phone is like kind of like a computer like in the old days, like a big Chromebook that you have to carry like in a backpack? Yeah, something like that, something like that. And, and every generation has a new level of technology. And so your generation is really has some of the best technology that the, that the world has ever seen. And that gives you the power to create your own stuff. And uh, I think that's very valuable for you guys to never lose sight of and be aware of that you can make things happen with what you have. And, get, and publish it to the world on YouTube, on TikTok, on Instagram. Your ability to publish your creation, your work, is, uh, is, is like never before. Yeah, kids. In the ancient days, like 22 years ago, i.e. old time, phones actually had these things called buttons with numbers. And under each button with a number, there'd be three letters and no pictures on the thing. You actually had to dial. And when you dial, you know, the appropriate digits, depending what country you're calling, there was a person on the other end. You actually spoke with that person for as long as, you know, your minutes would allow because you're paying about 60 cents a minute back then. Not like today, with unlimited everything. So that's what he was kind of explaining to you. But just, you know, Ask your dad, mom, or grandparent. They'll show you one of those old phones because they got them hidden away somewhere like in a toolbox or an old drawer or something. You can see what they look like. It'd be a great history lesson for you. I used to have one see? from my uncle. My uncle gave me one. Yeah, that's an ask your question. Why did you uh, need to pay 60 cents a minute just for calling? Mr. Gross, I'll let you answer that great question. Let me answer that. Oh, thank you. All right. So you had to pay 60 cents a minute because we didn't have as many satellites. You know, technology, as technology grows through the generations, some things get, get less expensive and get cheaper because there's more infrastructure technology. Those are big words. Okay, let me break that down. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, even this, like us doing videos. I'm sure some of you can remember. I know the office. Uh, the fact that we're called is 